I almost never record. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chelsea. I'm here with my old friend and colleague, Elizabeth Tracy, who is the director at the Whistler Public Library in Whistler, Canada, on the unceded territories of the Squamish Lilwap First Nations. Um, and Elizabeth and I got started with Agile at literally the exact same time in the same training not knowing what we were jumping into. And we've had some very different experiences since then. Um, and I wanted to chat with you today about when we first got started and what you remember about that. Um, and if you can tell us, if you can tell everybody about sort of the culture at that point, and what you knew or were hoping to get out of it. Sure. So thank, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. So for a long time, um, our organization had been working on achieving um, what I would refer to as service excellence. And um, there, there are a lot of components to that, but in essence, it was creating an organization um, that was purposeful, barrier free, and community and patron centered. Um, up until the point that we were introduced to Agile, we had, I think, made really good progress in terms of our external service. But one of the things that always really got to me was how we did our work within the heart of the library. And I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I just knew that there were a lot of things that were occurring, a lot of tasks, um, you know, a lot of uh, schedule uh, details, um, activities that were not necessarily geared towards serving the customer. In fact, if anything, I would have called them maybe self-satisfying. <laughs> and um, so I had been in Monterey, California, at uh, the Internet Librarian Conference. And while I was there, I kept hearing this buzzword, Agile, didn't really know what it was, didn't really think a whole lot about it until I got back and I ran into our manager of IT um, here in Whistler and he started talking about Agile and he said that he had met this coach, who was really amazing. And um, he gave me his little elevator speech on it and I thought, well, it might be worth like taking a look. Yeah, you know, this is about um, stream streamlining the development process in software engineering um, and, you know, delivering um, value early and often and, um, you know, ensuring that something could be adjusted on the fly versus after something's done in order to deliver exactly what the customer wanted. Um, and so, you know, there was, wasn't really for me like an immediate correlation to how you would adapt that for libraries. But as you know, we ended up going to the session and literally like five minutes in, I was like, I think this is the thing that actually is going to be able to help us to apply service excellence to the heart of library operations and start to peel away some of those layers of the onion around like, what is the essence of the work here? What really needs to be done? Like what is important and, and what is just, um, if, I guess for lack of a better way of putting it, what we learned later, waste work. Huh. Waste work. Um, you just used the phrase delivering value early and often, which is probably the one that I think of and use most frequently. And Actually, the way that we're diving into this course is a little different from other introductions that I've taken. We're starting with lean and those just those couple of ideas. But when oh, really we good. first started applying agile in the heart of the house there, and I don't think I've introduced yet, I was the manager who was who Elizabeth brought on to be the head of the circulation and technical services department there at this time. Um, but when we implemented Agile, we started really small just with a couple of these catch phrases. I was just looking back at our, um, at our slides 
from one of the early presentations that we gave. And um, do you remember any of the other early phrases that we just started peppering into our speak and our culture? Mm, yeah, um, slow is fast. <laughs> that was one. Uh -huh. We would talk about um, stop starting and start finishing. That's the one of the big ones. And can you talk more about that? Stop starting, start finishing? Yeah, I think the one place that I would really, what really floats to the surface is uh, something like the trouble tub. So we would have people checking materials in all day long. And then they would, like anytime there was something that was out of the ordinary, they would basically like put it in a tub for somebody else to finish. Well, then of course the next person that comes in and picks up where the other person left off, they don't have a clean plate. They've got this trouble tub. And even worse, um, <laughs> another example of this would be people going in the book bins and pre-sorting inside the book bins what the materials were. So you'd have like piles of AV and piles of um, nonfiction and fiction. And then those piles, the pile would move to another place next to the check-in station. And so sometimes like those piles would get left. You could even go like further down the process and it would go from those piles being checked in to then a <laughs> shelving system, which would put all of the books or materials in shelf order before they'd even go to mm. the shelving carts. I think that was one of the things that stood out to me from that first day with Marius. Marius was the coach who um, Elizabeth and I met at that point. He was with the group Agile 42 in Vancouver. And uh, he told the story about the furniture company and um, and basically it breaks down to any unfinished work is waste. And of course, what we wanna do is eliminate waste. Um, but it was amazing, you know, because not all of our staff got that intense training, but how we came out with just a couple of phrases um, that, <laughs> that really helped to begin transforming the culture before we began getting into the roots of agile with everybody. Um, and so I, I want to ask, um, we, they say about agile, it's easy to use and difficult to master. Um, and that's also when I look back at our other presentations that we've given, um, we say, you know, just do it, just get started and um, see what you come up with. And that's all about the iterative approach too. Um, but what advice do you think that you have for people who are in week one of their agile course, they're going to go into their libraries this week. What's one thing that they could do or where would you suggest they could start? Yeah, I think yeah, one of the, think best the places place. for everyone to start is to make work visible. And so by what I mean by making work visible, I'm gonna sneak over here. I'm gonna show you a little bit of an example. Mm -hmm. You don't usually turn your back to the audience, but <laughs> that's my Kanban board right here. Up in the corner, it says to do, and then in progress, done. And those are our um, 2022 deliverables. Um, and I think that no matter what kind of a role you're in, whatever level you're in within an organization, um, I think it causes someone who's in the role to pause and take into consideration the amount of work that actually needs to be done and to start to assess whether or not that that is actually a realistic aspiration to complete <laughs> all that work first. Um, but the next thing that does is very importantly, it shows everyone else what you have on, on your plate. 
Um, and it also, when you're talking about things like say an asynchronous team, they can use a singular board to help keep continuous workflow going so mm -hmm. that, um, you know, people can um, see what has been accomplished within a day, but also too, when, um, you know, we talk about like not leaving work unfinished, right? Um, it really forces people to be accountable for what they start um, and taking that from, you know, in progress to done. Yeah. You know, one thing that I, um, this isn't what I was going to say right now, but I had thought about it earlier about the trickle out effect of scrum boards. Um, and I was thinking about how Mano, who is, what is Mano's position title? Administrative? Um, administrative assistant. Administrative assistant. She had started keeping the um, building maintenance board, uh, Kanban board on her wall so that the guys doing the maintenance could see where things were at when they came in. Um, and some of them started asking about it and it had this amazing cultural trickle out effect that was kind of unintended. Um, but what I was gonna say about make work visible just now is, you know, beyond the scrum and Kanban boards, um, cause again, it's week one, we're not really gonna get into those until week three or week yeah. four. Um, not that it's that difficult of a concept, it's so easy. Um, but back to the trouble, the trouble tub, right? Part of the trouble with the trouble tub was that it lived under the desk, right? It was a black hole of trouble down there. It was easy to, it was easy to ignore, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so people, pull work in that they can see needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, we did reconfigure that whole space in a very lean way. Yes. Um, I would love if we could maybe uh, borrow Maz for 30 minutes to look at some of the stuff in that corner of the room one time. Oh, soon. absolutely. I will tell you as well. Recently, she came to me and said, um, how many shelving cards did you buy at one point? I think we started out with like, six five. or five brand new shiny shelving carts. And then eventually we, um, as we oh, became more six. agile, we, uh, we uh -huh. whittled that down to about three. And during the pandemic, we whittled that down to keep the flow going because flow is very important, right? You're talking about delivering Never value, value early, and often. early and often. So that means that after you get a full cart, what do you do? You go out and shelve the cart. Shelve because that's a value to the patron, right? right? Um, but, um, yeah, now she's thinking, yeah, I'm like getting rid of most of them. <laughs> yeah. That's how I operate in my library. Cause I have a really tiny library. Uh, mm -hmm. we don't have room for a cart. And, um, so I take, you know, once I've checked in seven, eight books, I go and I get them on the shelves, um, because I can't stand the clutter around me either, but, um, you know, that is waste if it's sitting there in a place where a patron can't touch it. And what I always say about circulation departments is it's about flow. So blockages are deadly. <laughs> yes, yes. In the, in the heart of the library. Um, do you have anything else that you want to share about how to get started or advice well, for folks at know, the beginning I, of their really journey? Yeah, when I think about the essence of the notion of, um, you know, well, like Nike says, just do it, right? Um, I think that the lesson in that is that um, we need to get over the notion of perfection um, and seek progress versus perfection. Mm -hmm. um, I think oftentimes if you think across the different kinds or the different ways of pursuing completing a project. For instance, if you're looking at like the waterfall style of doing a project, everything is planned out in advance um, for a perfect um, ending, ideally a perfect ending, right? But the beauty of this is that if you just get started and you're not seeking perfection, that 
you can make incremental iterative change that you can tweak as you go to begin to refine it and customize it to your internal or external right. customers. Right. Well, so. I think it's really incredible um, looking back that training that you and I mentioned tonight, we that was in December of 2016, mm -hmm. I think. And so, you know, look how long your library has been able to use this in all sorts of different situations now in every department, more departments across your whole municipality are doing it. It's helped you get through a pandemic. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing the way that it has transformed and shaped a whole culture. I you would guys say are that, a case study. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, <laughs> just the mere adoption of the principles and using that as sort of the litmus test against decisions that we make or what we undertake or how we do things um, has embedded a level of uh, accountability within the organization that we didn't have before it actually, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, creates a set of values for us to work in that helps mm -hmm. us avoid things like over coordination mm -hmm. um, or putting people before paper or putting paperwork before people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's a whole lot of transparency and trust, and it goes both ways. I know that um, one of the things we would do uh, were the um, what's working well and what's tricky. And then that uh, we would we would move the stickies from what's tricky into what's working well. And I know that as a management team there, it helped us to be accountable to staff when they would say what's tricky and we would come up with the solutions together. I mean, the entire team was making sure that we found solutions for, you know, people's, um, you know, there were lighting issues uh, and ergonomic things and scheduling things, um, you know, asks from the staff, as well as things that we were looking for in terms of delivering that value for our customers. So, yeah, I think you highlight something really important there in that this isn't just about project management, it's not just a tool for that. Embedded in this uh, is um, a remarkable set of values that help to create an ecosystem mm -hmm. unlike any other. And along with that, um, it fosters, I think a really healthy um, framework for, for change management. Yeah. So, it's just, you know, it's all um, interwoven into this, this singular um, way of doing things. So, but it yeah, is, it's, that, you yeah. know, it's, it's hard to master, but I think that like, you know, if it's something that you really um, embed into your organization, whether it be, you know, your strategic plan, I mean, this is our strategic plan, it's two pages. And it is that way because we are seeking to work in an agile sort of way right so right. Hmm. anyways planning is guessing well, i'm going to stop the recording here but thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with folks in the library juice class uh, again that's elizabeth tracy with their library my pleasure thank you <laughs>